Top Court of India has dismissed the SBI's plea in the electoral bonds case and asked the number one bank in the country, as they called it, to furnish all the data by end of day tomorrow. The Supreme Court has said that the SBI has to disclose this data by the 12th of March, which is tomorrow, end of day, and has also directed the Election Commission of India to publish all these details by the 15th of March, 5 p.m. Uh, there were hectic parleys in the Supreme Court between the petitioner's lawyer, Harish Salve, who was arguing for the State Bank of India, as well as the Chief Justice of India and the Constitution bench. We'll get you all the details of what transpired in court. But Prashant Bhushan, who's the petitioner in this, uh, who's, who's the lawyer for the petitioners in the case, has just reacted to the judgment. Let's listen in. Supreme Court has taken a tough stand on the uh, state bank's application for extension of time till 30th June to disclose details about the donors of electoral bonds as well as the parties which redeemed those electoral bonds. The court has dismissed the application of the state bank pointing out that the data that the court had asked them to give is already available with the state bank according to their own affidavit. They have to just submit the details of the donors on the one hand and the details of the parties which redeemed the bonds on the other hand. State bank was saying we have to do the cross matching etc. Court has said you don't need to do the cross matching just give these details to the election commission and you have to give it by tomorrow. And thereafter, they have said that the state bank chairman should file an affidavit to this effect. They are not yet taking any contempt action, but they may have to if the state bank doesn't comply. They have also said that the election commission should publish all these details which have been given by the state bank about the donors and the parties which have received the bonds by 15th of this month. And also the earlier details which were supposed to be given by political parties to the uh, election commission about the bonds received by them. Even those details have to be published by 15th of this month. So uh, 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 it's a very good, strong judgment in consonance with the earlier strong judgment that the court had given on electoral bonds. And my colleague Sunil Prabhu, who's been tracking all the details of this uh, big story from the court, is joining us live. Sunil, break it down for us. Uh, you know, what is this judgment of the Supreme Court essentially mean? What all has the court said? Well, this is a big day for transparency, accountability and probity in public life. Uh, these are, you know, clearly the State Bank of India has been put on notice not any small ace, a student uh, general manager who has filed the affidavit, but the chairman managing director. If he fails to do it tomorrow of disclosing by five o'clock, the Supreme Court of India, the highest court of this country, will uh, initiate, uh, you know, uh, uh, what they call uh, a, a, a case for contempt of court, willful default. So the, he has been told very categorically in the... In the Election Commission, which has now come under greater scrutiny because of uh, the shadow of the appointment of uh, at the resignation of Mr. Arun Goyal, has been told by 5 p.m. tomorrow on the 15th, they will have to publish it on the website. So this entire country will know all those who benefited in terms of electoral bonds, political parties, who were the donors. Uh, they don't need to match it. The State Bank of India's, uh, you know, uh, uh, grouse through Harish Salve was that we have to, you know, correlate the two. We need time till the 30th of June. We'll comply. And now they have been told, irrespective, you just you just put the details. Uh, there are enough of people who can do the data crunching and, and, and you know, uh, go ahead with the entire process. So this is uh, a really a big setback. Uh, for the State Bank of India, for the government in particular, uh, which had asked uh, for, you know, uh, uh, through the State Bank of India for more time. Uh, I spoke to a, a top finance uh, official who was present in the court. Uh, he said that it's now for the State Bank of India to comply. They were the ones who were giving the issue and the problem. Now they will have to do so. So, uh, in fact, uh, as you heard, Mr. Prashant Bhushan, he didn't even have to argue uh, before the uh, Chief Justice of India and the Constitutional Bench. Uh, the, chief, uh, the Chief Justice, as well as uh, the other judges, were uh, really hell-bent on taking on the State Bank of India for non-compliance, why the unit 
we hadn't done anything for 26 days. Uh, it was uh, clearly very, very, uh, they had come down heavily uh, saying that, uh, you know, you cannot uh, 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 not adhere to our order. Uh, and it's in that context uh, that as the country gets ready uh, for the, uh, uh, you know, uh, an election in the Lok Sabha, uh, those details will now have to be made public. Uh, so, Neil, a couple of questions pertaining to the ramifications of this. But before we really get into that, uh, operative part, what all is the SBI now obligated to furnish? Because the argument that Harish Salve has made on behalf of the SBI has said that there is information that exists in silos. Compiling all of that information requires time. It is on that grounds that they sought an extension, which from the 30th of June in the arguments was cut down to three weeks, but the Supreme Court had none of it, said it has to be done by tomorrow. So from a viewer's point of view, can you break down what is the information that we will expect the SBI to give to the ECI by EOD tomorrow? So as uh, the entire country was watching the proceedings, you saw the Chief Justice of India and the entire bench looking at uh, those details, uh, which you are asking about, you know, B and C. And they were quite categorical that, you know, you don't, uh, it's not SBI's job to, uh, you know, try to uh, decode and, uh, uh, you know, uh, mix and match and, uh, you know, correlate the two. They have to comply with the order of disclosing who bought the bonds and who encashed it, period. That's all. So, ultimately, there will be some data analysts, data crunching, uh, probably the NGO that itself uh, is looking for transparency, uh, transparency and accountability will themselves uh, correlate the two. Uh, but the information that is there by the State Bank of India, India's largest bank, has been told comply immediately with the donor list and with those who have encashed. So, simple, straight, please disclose all the details.